Hello ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another video. This is this is my honest impressions Wow race, you did that wrong. Honest opinion and impressions of Man of Badan. How it's how we get into this then. Man of Badan, at first glance, is another contender in the horror genre that will give us cheap scares and another crappy story. But when you actually get into the main game itself, it's completely the opposite with it giving me anxiety and I can't believe anything that it really throws at me during the game because I can't believe my eyes. Not really. This kind of anxiety isn't felt in other horror games, even though some of them have a much larger budget to them and bigger names behind it. My total time with the game was about four hours, whilst the first half wasn't really that scary. In fact, it was almost charming to see the characters interacting with each other. I will emphasize the word almost. The game itself is not perfect, but it's not, let's be honest, it's not even close to being perfect. I will say though that it does three things right as a horror game. The first one is having actual horror in the game to actually be scary. I admit that this was the second game that actually made me feel a little bit terrified. While it doesn't have the same feel as Alien Isolation, it still scared me and I will give congratulations where that is going. And that's going to Supermassive Games. The second thing is the game is actually fun. That needs to be emphasised more than enough. It's fun. It's a fun game. And you can't say that about some other horror games in some franchises. <coughs> Resident Evil 6. <coughs> Sorry, what was that? <laughs> and finally, it has a good backstory. Where I'm very excited to see what happens into the next game itself. And, and actually brings us new fascinating lore. Though it doesn't... This lore is a complete opposite of what the story is. So it's got interesting lore, but a shit story. So we're getting into the, so, and this is actually like, this this whole video I'm making for you is for you. This is my honest opinion and impressions of the game, so that you can make the decision to either buy the game or leave the game. The information I give to you in this video is just to inform you of the good, the bad, and the ugly sides of the game. Like in previous versions, in the previous video of the series, I'll talk about the worst things that I encountered during the game, which was sadly how predictable the choices were. And it was very easy by the end of the game. It, but it was very easy to allow my character to survive. Sadly, I did not play Supermassive's previous horror game, Until Dawn. From what I've heard about it, it was very difficult to keep characters alive throughout the entire game. I think there was up to about 10 different characters you had to. Uh, keep alive, and that's what I wanted. I wanted that ho whole point of, I wanted to struggle. I wanted the, th the first um, playthrough to be, oh shit, I've managed to kill lots of characters, but I've, I've, I don't know, I've kept one alive. That's what I wanted. Second playthrough, I somehow managed to keep most of them survived, and, and then the third playthrough, I'll get everyone survived. That make if you make if that makes sense at all. It, it, <laughs> my Apparently my English is off today, apparently. <laughs> I think the worst thing about this is that I kind of knew what, where the deaths, what was going to happen, and how they were going to force me to kill another person. And it that kind of ruined the story for me, and the jump scares in between. I wondered that these choices, that they were, obviously I kind of guessed what was happening through the story. As I mentioned through the streams, it was I knew that it was there was a gas that was coming to make people hallucinate and ha have a panic attack. And sadly, with all these... I'm, I'm, I, I didn't guess, I just knew that this was going to happen. And I didn't want that. Not out of this horror game, which apparently was going to be quite difficult to keep all characters alive. And I just wanted what they did in previous uh, Until Dawn, but just because I'm an because I play Xbox, I wanted this to be the Xbox version of Until Dawn. Did we get it? No. We did not get an Xbox version of Until Dawn. Is it a completely different game? Yes. So, please set your expectations for that. But though, I ha as I said before, there are some amazing things about this game. And I absolutely enjoyed the horror aspect. What the developers wanted you to... When the developers wanted you to be scared, you were going to be scared. And best of all... You reach, you got this anxiety, not wanting to go around every corner, just in case you were gonna shit your pants next. I'm not exaggerating. I wish I was, 
but I was that scared. I know she doesn't have a gun. The lady that we were playing as. Yeah, I'm risking it for the fucking biscuit. Ooh. No, we're not looking at... Run, 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 run. Run, run, run. Actually, would it help if he saw it again? No. It's just blood. Or if so, if you do have problems with this anxiety, I wouldn't play this game at all. Honestly, it's just not the game for you. Though, I do see a person in the back with the question. Yeah, I see the person in the back with the question. Yes, you. The amazing bit. Yes, yes, yes. Go on. So, what was the question? How do they cause anxiety throughout the entire game? Good question, you devilishly handsome man. The scene... The game manages to think that characters or humans are there in the next scene are completely gone. So, in one part of the stream, there was a man I could... I, th I thought I could see throughout the stream, but he apparently wasn't there. And even there was a ghost that appeared and then disappeared just for a second, and it makes you think about... Is your eyes deceiving you? Is this what is really happening? And of course, this is a game, and yeah, everything is happening. I don't know which game to blame on, but I, honestly, this game wouldn't be it. <laughs> it's a good couple of like horror scares. I think that's it. Dude, did I just see a ghost? Please, please, please tell me you saw a ghost as well. Because I'm actually going mad. I don't... Did I see a ghost? This is literally the corner of my eye. <laughs> like, what the fuck? Um, and it does make you feel anxious about every... Is this going to be, as I said, was it going to be gas? Was this going to be... Oh, no, it's going to be human. But we didn't get that. We got a scientific story. We got... And with horror, you can't have um, sense around it. Not really. If you have sense added to the mix, you kind of get... It gets predictable. We want it to be... It doesn't, make, it doesn't have to make sense at all. If you look at the greatest horror movies ever produced, they don't make fuck all sense. What? A killer's going around killing random people? Brilliant. Why? No reason. It sounds funny, eh? But still, going back to this, it's you're guessing. It, yeah. It in fact there is a jump scare where you, that where it's completely normal. If in fact there's a, a one way in the locker where a you see something come down and it's like a almost like a skin, and that does did terrify me. But in the end, it was just a gas mask. So you go back into that, open it, and there you go. It's just a stupid gas mask. And you you, you realise that you're hallucinating at that point. So as I said, Supermassive Games manages to achieve a terrifying game that will most likely give me nightmares for days to come. But something more scary than the jump scares they would come across is the scarily bad story. I'm sorry, but I was not a big fan of the story whatsoever. The basic overview is that a group of friends go on a boat trip, trying to find a ship later on, and everything goes wrong when a band of pirates come aboard out of nowhere. And then we find the ship. And it looks... Oh no, it looks haunted. Ah. Do you see? It's not scary. It was not a great story. I wasn't interested in it, and neither should you. So, if it doesn't have a great story... Does the characters at least make up for it? The answer, answer to that whopping great answer... Oops, that's English, Reese. The answer to that is a whopping nope. Except one. So there are five main characters in this game. You have a stereotypical rich kids. Um, with the girl being this adventurous, great body... But as basic as they come. Whilst this older brother 
was a complete dick when he gets rejected. And he has... It's like no one's taught him the word no. So both of those characters weren't great in that reserve. I didn't have any sort of empathy towards them when if if they got in danger. Nothing. So in that case, there was three other characters. So there was the two brothers in the game. Um, the pair of siblings, Brad and Alex. There was there were names. One of them, Brad, was this kind of like sports character who who got he got everything. He got the girl. He got he, but he worked for life. He worked everything through life. But it was it was kind of interesting, kind of not. It was it it was hard working character, of course, but it, he's he's that sort of person that you see in every horror movie. Oh, you're the the hard working sports person does everything right, gets the girl, and all that sort of shit. We've seen that over and done before. Though Alex, I felt like he was a weaker-minded person. He had these things against him. He, he was he was awkward. He was just a pain in the ass. He couldn't, he couldn't drink for fuck all. So, why did I like him? He, he could be summed up as the everyday nerd, and for me... I enjoyed those sort of characters. I enjoy that they've got the smarts, but then they've also got the awkward interaction. They've got the good and they've got the bad combined into one. Versus the other three, which is, oh, they're all good or they're all bad. It, it didn't have a mix. Oh, there's someone I am forgetting before I go on. And that is the ship captain. The ship captain... Was not like, no. It was not just a big buff shooter puff captain. No, 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 no. This was just an ordinary hint, woman that hints at dark past that we never actually hear about. Something that interested in her went as quick as my first time having sex. So now I'm going to combine two topics that wouldn't usually go together, and that's graphics and gameplay. But since both of them can be summed up into about hundred words each, I had to combine them for the sake of my OCD when I was writing the script. So the first thing that I want to talk about is, of course, graphics. And oh boy, is it damn beautiful in the cutscenes. I didn't realise how good this game truly was until the very end. Though I will say for the character models, when the designers, what, what did the designers have against sh- sh- uh, shoes? I was almost like I was in a bad horror movie and the director had a bloody footprint a fetish problem. Oh, come on, come on. <laughs> very nice. Oh dear. Do you want to call, like, call for help or some shit? Alright. Let's do this. Oh, nice. Okay, cool. You fucking did it. Holy shit. Um, holy shit indeed, man. Dude, just... These are like people not thinking about, I don't know, put some shoes on. If they s- he even had the chance to put shoes on. Oh, man, I would not do it. Without shoes. Not setting my fucking foot on that shit. Though, I was completely awestruck when it came to cutscenes with the rain and the lightning and all that sort of shit. Because it- it was something that I- it was- I've never seen done before. It was so well executed, it was so well put together. I, like I said, I was awestruck. I was all, I was struck and down with this. Oh my god, it looks beautiful. Even when editing um, the individual parts, it was interesting to look at it again and going, huh, that's damn fine beautiful right there. Now, we talk about the gameplay. The gameplay is pretty, pretty simple in this game. It has and having only two things that you can actually do. And that is quick time events and choices. Both of these aren't very interesting at first glance, but I'll explain why this works only in this game. Starting off with the quick time events, usually I'm not a big fan of these because they are way too easy if you fail them, and because, and if you do fail them, you're probably sharing this one brain cell with the people who made Stadia, and you may have to restart the scene. But that's 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 the worst thing about having a QTE in the normal games. In this game, 
If you fail one, that could mean the end of a character. Failing these QTEs or just doing them basically gave me an anxiety attack. That's what I loved about it. This gameplay, it worked. So, because it had this kind of danger to them, these characters could die if I fail a QTE. That's what I loved about them. Choices, they were completely different. They were kind of weird for me. I enjoyed the fact that I, if I chose the wrong answer, then I would be upset a character or would even die or survive because of my own actions. But since the story was quite predictable, I didn't have to worry about that sort of stuff. I, w- I wasn't worried about being an idiot and getting my people dead. So, there was nothing to fear from that. And, with, like I said, this is a horror game. You should have to fear the fact that your characters are going to die. If not, then what's the point? So that is all the basics you should know about the game. So that you can make a decision... So either save your money for Destroy All Humans, or spend it half on a decent horror experience. So thank you so much for watching this video, it really helps me out. If you can click like and subscribe, that would generally help me out more than anything else in the world. Because it just lets me know to say, oh you're watching this, you enjoy what you're watching. So, that is the end, and I wish you a very great goodbye.